The bustling command center of the United Earth Defense was alive with activity as operators monitored screens displaying a myriad of data. In the midst of it all stood Captain Nathan Pierce, a seasoned strategist known for his sharp mind and unyielding demeanor. Captain Pierce, Lieutenant Harrow called out from across the room, beckoning him over to a large central monitor. The image on the screen was unlike anything Nathan had seen before, a complex signal pattern emanating from deep space. What are we looking at, Harrow? Nathan asked, his gaze fixed on the pulsating graphic. It's a message, sir. We've confirmed it's not from any known human source. It's extraterrestrial, Harrow replied, his voice a mixture of excitement and concern. Nathan leaned in closer, analyzing the data. How long have we been receiving this? Just over two hours now. It's structured, repetitive, definitely intentional. The room buzzed with a mix of nervous energy and scientific curiosity. Nathan tapped his communicator. Get me Dr. Emery and Colonel Blake, now. Minutes later, Dr. Simon Emery, the head of Xenolinguistics, and Colonel Michelle Blake, in charge of planetary defense, joined Nathan and Harrow at the monitor. Dr. Emery was the first to break the silence. If this is what I think it is, Nathan, we're not just looking at a message. We're looking at a first contact scenario. Colonel Blake, always cautious, chimed in. We need to consider the security implications immediately. If they can send a message this clearly, they might be capable of much more. Nathan nodded, his strategic mind already turning. Agreed. We need protocols in place. Any response we make could set the tone for future interactions. Simon, any luck decoding it? It's preliminary, but there's pattern and syntax. It's language, Nathan, no doubt about it, Dr. Emery explained, scrolling through data on a tablet. As they spoke, another officer interrupted. Captain, there's a transmission coming through. Audio and video this time. The group moved to a larger screen. The static cleared, revealing the visage of an alien entity. It had a calm, almost serene expression. Its skin shimmered slightly, reflecting an array of colors not dissimilar to an oil slick. I am Voril, of the Krylaxians. The creature spoke, its voice filtered and metallic through the speakers. We greet you, people of Earth, in peace. We have much to share and hope for mutual enrichment. Nathan watched carefully, his mind racing. Open a channel for me, he instructed a technician. Channel open, Captain. This is Captain Nathan Pierce of the United Earth Defense. We receive your message and are prepared to listen. We are cautious but wish to understand your intentions. Varel's image nodded slightly. Wise words, Captain. We seek resources your world has in abundance. In exchange, we offer technologies beyond your current comprehension. We prefer peace, but are prepared for all contingencies. The room tensed at the implication. Colonel Blake stepped forward. And if we refuse this exchange? Varel's eyes narrowed. That would be... most unfortunate for all parties involved. As the transmission ended, Nathan turned to his team. Let's prepare. We're in uncharted waters, but we'll navigate them as we have always done, with caution and courage. Harrow, keep monitoring their signals. Dr. Emery, I need that language cracked yesterday. Colonel, begin readiness drills. I don't want to be caught off guard. As his team dispersed to their tasks, Nathan remained staring at the now blank screen. This was a new chapter for humanity, and he would need all his wits to lead them through it. The next morning found the United Earth Defense Command Center bustling with an intensified urgency. Under the stark artificial light, Captain Nathan Pierce surveyed his team, scattered across the room, each absorbed in their tasks with a grave focus rarely seen during routine operations. Dr. Simon Emery approached Nathan with a tablet in hand. I've made some progress, Captain. The language structure is complex, but we're starting to parse some of their communication patterns. Nathan nodded, his expression unreadable. Good work, Simon. What can you tell me? It's not just greetings and pleasantries. They've embedded specific demands in their messages, Simon said, his voice tense. They want access to our natural resources, specifically minerals and water, and they want it soon. Demands? That's a strong position to take for a first contact, Nathan mused, his mind racing through the implications. Colonel Michelle Blake joined them, her face set in a hard line. We've also picked up increased activity in their fleet movements. They're positioning themselves in a way that could give them strategic advantages over our satellite systems. Nathan's jaw tightened. They're pressing us on all fronts. Have they given a deadline? Forty-eight hours, Colonel Blake replied. After that, they said they'll reconsider their peaceful approach. The gravity of the situation hung heavily in the air. 
Nathan turned to address his immediate team. We need options, and we need them now. Simon, continue to work on the language and communications. Understand their culture. Anything that gives us insight into their thinking. Michelle, I want defense and evacuation scenarios ready to review in three hours. As the team dispersed, Nathan's second-in-command, Major Derek Jensen, approached with a secure phone in hand. It's the President, Captain. She needs an update. Nathan took the phone. Madam President, we're facing an ultimatum. The Krylaxians are demanding access to our resources. They've implied a threat if we do not comply within two days. The President's voice was firm. What are your recommendations, Captain? We prepare on all fronts, Nathan responded without hesitation. We continue diplomatic efforts to buy time, but we must prepare for a potential conflict. If they intend to push, we need to be ready to push back. Proceed as you see fit, Captain. Keep me updated. We have to stand firm, Nathan. After the call, Nathan looked out over the command center, his gaze landing on every face turned towards him, awaiting orders. He stepped up to the central platform, his voice resonant and clear. This is not the first time humanity has faced a threat, but it is the first time an extraterrestrial force has challenged us on our own soil. We will not bow to threats, nor will we surrender our planet. Prepare yourselves for negotiations, but be ready for war. We will defend Earth, no matter the cost. The room filled with a new energy, a mixture of fear, determination, and resolve. As his team rallied, Nathan felt the weight of his responsibility. He wouldn't just be commanding a defense, he would be safeguarding a world. As the hours ticked down, every decision would count, and he hoped that when the time came, humanity's response would be enough to turn the tide. In the cool dimness of the early dawn, Captain Nathan Pierce stood at the edge of the military airfield, watching as aircraft after aircraft touched down. Each one brought with it units from across the globe, all responding to the impending Krilaxian threat. Major Derek Jensen approached Nathan, a stack of deployment reports in hand. We've got units coming in from every continent, sir. Europeans, Asians, Africans, everyone's contributing what they can. Nathan gave a slight nod, his eyes never leaving the flurry of activity on the tarmac. And the civilians? Evacuation protocols are in place. Major cities are being prepared for potential conflict zones, and we're setting up refugee sites in safe areas. The conversation was cut short by the arrival of Dr. Simon Emery, who jogged towards them, his expression urgent. Nathan, I've made a breakthrough with the language. I think I've found something, a cultural reference that might help us understand their motivations. Let's hear it, Nathan said, turning to face him. Simon pulled out his tablet, displaying a series of complex symbols that morphed into more familiar alphabetic characters. They have a concept similar to our manifest destiny. It's deeply ingrained. They believe it's their divine right to expand and utilize the universe's resources. Earth is just part of their cosmic trail. This could explain their aggressive diplomacy, Derek noted, his brow furrowed. Exactly, Simon confirmed. And there's more. They respect strength and resolve. Showing any sign of weakness could be disastrous. Nathan processed this information, his strategic mind already turning over new tactics. We need to show strength then, but let's keep looking for a peaceful solution. Simon. Continue your work. This cultural insight could be key to negotiating with them. As they dispersed, Nathan walked towards the hangar where a meeting of top military officials was about to commence. Inside, the room was lined with representatives of Earth's varied armed forces, all awaiting his directive. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan began, his voice echoing slightly off the hangar walls. The Krilaxians have underestimated us. They see our diverse nations and interpret it as division. We will show them that our diversity is our strength. We will stand united, not just in defense of our homes, but for the preservation of our planet. He paused, letting his words sink in. We are preparing for the possibility of conflict, yes, but our goal remains to avoid war. We'll continue diplomatic efforts, but prepare for immediate action should talks fail. Each of you has a role to play. Colonel Michelle Blake stepped forward, distributing operational plans. We have a series of joint exercises scheduled. We'll integrate our various technologies and tactics to ensure we operate as a cohesive unit. Time is not on our side, but precision is. As the meeting wrapped up, Nathan stayed behind, watching as the room cleared. Major Jensen lingered, looking thoughtful. Nathan, do you really think we can avoid war? He asked quietly. We have to try, Derek, Nathan replied, his tone resolute. But if it comes to war, we will be ready. We have to be.
Leaving the hangar, Nathan looked out towards the horizon. The sun was just beginning to crest, bathing the airfield in a pale light. Today, Earth's defenders were preparing for the worst. Yet there was hope that dawned with the new day, a hope that peace might still prevail. Under the veil of night, the command center was a hub of tense activity. Captain Nathan Pierce monitored the vast array of screens, each displaying real-time data from Earth's orbital defense satellites. The atmosphere was electric, the staff on edge, awaiting the Krylaxians' next move. Suddenly, an operator at one of the primary radar stations stood abruptly, his voice cutting through the low murmur of the room. Captain, we've got incoming objects on a fast approach vector. It looks like... they're missiles, sir. Nathan's heart raced as he moved swiftly to the operator station. Confirm trajectory and potential targets, he ordered. The operator worked feverishly, fingers flying over the controls. Confirmed, sir. They're headed for major defense satellites and our primary communication arrays. Sound general quarters. Get Colonel Blake and Major Jensen here immediately, Nathan commanded, his voice calm but carrying an undercurrent of urgency. Within moments, the command center was in full battle mode, alarms blaring and personnel scrambling to their stations. Colonel Michelle Blake arrived, her expression grim. What's our response, Nathan? We take them out before they reach the satellites, deploy counter-missiles and ready the laser defense systems, Nathan responded without hesitation. As the defense systems engaged, the room watched through live feeds as streaks of light arced across the space around Earth. One by one, the incoming missiles were intercepted and destroyed, brilliant explosions lighting up the void. Direct hits on all targets, sir, an operator reported, relief in his voice. But the relief was short-lived. Major Derek Jensen, who had been coordinating with other units, turned to Nathan, his face taut with concern. It was a diversion, Nathan. They're launching a larger fleet towards Earth. Estimated time of arrival, 20 minutes. Nathan's jaw clenched. Inform all units. Prepare for orbital engagement. I want every ship ready to fire as soon as they come within range. We're not letting them through. As the Krilaxian fleet advanced, a tense silence fell over the command center. Everyone's eyes were glued to the screens showing the approaching ships, sleek, metallic vessels that glinted menacingly as they neared. Engage on my mark, now, Nathan ordered. The room vibrated with the sound of Earth's orbital defense cannons firing in unison, sending a barrage of high-energy plasma toward the alien fleet. The first line of Krilaxian ships took heavy damage, several of them breaking apart under the intense onslaught. But the aliens adapted quickly, maneuvering with terrifying precision and returning fire with their own advanced weaponry. Explosions flared in orbit as both sides exchanged deadly volleys. Earth's defenses held strong, but the strain was evident. Keep the pressure on! Target their command ships! Nathan instructed, pointing to the larger vessels that seemed to be coordinating the attack. After tense minutes that felt like hours, the tide began to turn. The Krilaxian fleet, unable to breach Earth's defenses, started to retreat their formation broken. Colonel Blake let out a breath she seemed to have been holding. We held them off, Nathan. For now. Nathan nodded, his gaze still fixed on the screen. Monitor their retreat. I want a full damage assessment and casualty report within the hour. As the command center staff set to work, Major Jensen approached Nathan, admiration mixed with concern in his eyes. That was too close, Nathan. What if they come back with more? They probably will. Nathan acknowledged, his mind already racing with strategies for the next encounter. And we'll be ready for them. Let's use this time wisely, improve our defenses, and maybe, just maybe, find a way to push back even harder. The victory was minor, and the threat far from over, but for now, Earth had answered the Krylaxians' aggression in kind. As the first hints of dawn began to lighten the sky, Nathan knew the real battle was just beginning. As the dust settled from the first major skirmish in orbit, Captain Nathan Pierce reviewed the latest surveillance data in the dimly lit war room. The recent victory had given Earth's defenses a much-needed boost in morale, but Nathan knew the Krelaxians were regrouping for another assault. It was time to shift tactics. Major Jensen, Nathan called across the room, where Derek was coordinating with the intelligence team. I need an update on the enemy fleet's movements. Derek walked over, a tablet in hand. They've pulled back to a holding pattern just beyond the moon's orbit. It looks like they're waiting for reinforcements. Nathan nodded thoughtfully. Or buying time to study our defenses. We need to be proactive. Have we made any progress with the technology we captured? Yes, 
We've managed to reverse engineer some of their shield technology and integrate it into our own defense systems, Derek replied, his tone cautious yet optimistic. That's good, but I want more, Nathan asserted, his strategic mind working through the possibilities. We're going to capture one of their ships intact. I want to understand their technology, not just bits and pieces. Derek raised his eyebrows in surprise. That's a tall order, sir. Their ships are heavily fortified. I know, but it's necessary. Assemble a strike team. I'll lead the mission myself, Nathan declared, determination setting in his features. The preparations were swift. Within hours, Nathan and a specially selected team of Earth's finest soldiers were aboard a stealth shuttle, closing in on a smaller Krylaxian scout ship that had strayed slightly from the main fleet. As they neared the alien vessel, the tension among the team was palpable. Nathan checked his weapon one last time before turning to his team. Remember, we need this ship largely intact. Use minimal force. Our goal is to board, secure, and bring it back. The shuttle maneuvered silently through space, making use of the Krelaxian ship's blind spot to attach itself to the hull. The team, dressed in high-tech spacesuits, embarked on a risky spacewalk to reach the access hatch. Using a portable laser cutter, they breached the entry point, gaining access to the ship's interior. Inside, the environment was starkly alien. Bioluminescent panels lit the corridors with a soft glow, and the air was thick with an unfamiliar metallic scent. The team moved with precision, neutralizing the crew with stun devices designed to incapacitate without causing harm. With the ship secured, Nathan initiated the autopilot, setting course back to Earth. Control, this is Pierce. We have the ship. Returning to base. The return journey was tense, every minute stretched as they waited to see if the Krelaxians would notice their missing scout. But luck, or perhaps the distraction of their fleet's regrouping, was on their side. Back at the command center, the captured vessel was quickly moved to a secure hangar for in-depth analysis. Scientists and engineers swarmed over the alien technology, eager to unlock its secrets. Nathan watched them work, a mix of relief and resolve washing over him. This could change everything he murmured to Derek, who had come to report on the fleet's movements. It could indeed, sir. But how do we play this now? They'll want their ship back, Derek pointed out. We use it as leverage, Nathan replied, his mind already formulating plans. We've shown them we can fight. Now let's see if they're willing to talk. The capture of the Krelaxian ship marked a turning point in the conflict. It was not just a victory in terms of technology, but a crucial psychological win. Humanity had demonstrated its capability to not only defend, but also to challenge the invaders on equal footing. As Nathan prepared for the next phase of this unprecedented confrontation, he knew the real battle, for peace or for continued survival, was just beginning. Captain Nathan Pierce stood before the strategic map in the war room, flanked by his top advisors. The room buzzed with a new sense of purpose, energized by their recent capture of a Krylaxian ship. On the screen, a holographic projection displayed the Earth and the positions of the remaining Krelaxian fleet, now noticeably cautious after the loss of one of their scout ships. With the technology we've extracted from the captured vessel, we have a real shot at leveling the playing field, Nathan began, addressing the room. We've successfully integrated their shielding technology into our own fighters. It's time to take the fight to them. Colonel Michelle Blake stepped forward, toggling the display to show their proposed targets. We've identified three key ships within their fleet that appear to be command and control centers. Taking these out could severely disrupt their operational capabilities. Major Derek Jensen added, We've also managed to decode part of their communications protocol from the ship. We can use this to sow confusion during our attack. Give us an edge. Nathan nodded in approval. We'll split our forces into three strike teams. Each team will target one of these ships. Use the confusion to your advantage. Hit them hard and fast and pull back before they can regroup. The room filled with the hum of voices as the teams coordinated their final preparations. Nathan turned to Dr. Simon Emery, who had been key in decoding the alien technology. Keep trying to crack their full communication protocols. The more we understand, the better. Understood, Captain. We're making progress every hour, Simon assured him. As night fell, the counteroffensive began. The first strike team, led by Nathan himself, approached their target under the cover of artificially created sensor echoes, a trick learned from the alien tech. The Krelaxians, fooled by the false readings, scrambled their fighters in the wrong direction. Now, Nathan commanded, and the Earth fighters descended upon the alien command ship with a barrage of newly enhanced plasma torpedoes. 
the shielding held against the alien counterfire, a testament to the effectiveness of the stolen technology. Simultaneously, the other two teams engaged their targets. Explosions lit up the void of space as the Earth forces executed their attacks with precision. Within minutes, the designated Krillaxian ships were crippled, drifting helplessly as their systems failed. Nathan watched the operation unfold from his cockpit, a grim satisfaction in his eyes. All teams, disengage and return to base. We've done what we came to do. As they returned, the victory was tempered by the knowledge that the Krylaxians would not take this attack lightly. Earth had shown its teeth, but the response would be fierce. Back at the command center, reports came flooding in. The Krylaxians were indeed regrouping, their movements suggesting a consolidation of forces rather than a retreat. Nathan met with his advisors to plan their next move. We've shown them we can disrupt their operations, but they will adapt, Colonel Blake noted, studying the latest data. We should expect a counter move soon. Nathan agreed. We'll keep the pressure on, continue to exploit every advantage we've gained, but let's also strengthen our defenses. We've angered them, and they'll come at us with everything they've got. The meeting adjourned with teams moving quickly to reinforce Earth's defensive positions and to keep a vigilant watch on the enemy. The war was far from over, but Earth's forces, now battle-hardened and technologically augmented, were ready to face whatever came next. Nathan looked over the reports again, his resolve hardening. This was humanity's fight, and they would not back down. The war room was abuzz with a mixture of tension and grim determination as Captain Nathan Pierce reviewed the latest strategic maps with his commanders. The Krylaxian fleet had rallied after the recent Earth counteroffensive, their numbers bolstered by reinforcements from their homeworld. Nathan knew the time had come for a decisive confrontation. Listen up, Nathan addressed the room, his voice carrying a weight that silenced the chatter. The Krylaxians are massing near the asteroid belt. It's clear they're preparing for a major strike. We're not going to wait for them to come to us. We strike first and we strike hard. This ends today. Colonel Michelle Blake nodded, her eyes scanning the fleet formations on the screen. Our ships are ready, Nathan. We've incorporated the alien shield tech across the board. It's given our pilots a new edge. Major Derek Jensen chimed in, pointing at several tactical points on the hologram. We've set up traps across the belt, mines, and automated turrets. Once they enter, we'll close the net. Nathan looked around at the determined faces of his team. We've come a long way, he said. Today we finish this. Prepare all squadrons for launch. As the Earth fleet maneuvered into position, the vast emptiness of space near the asteroid belt soon erupted into a theater of war. Nathan piloted his own ship, leading the vanguard. As they approached the engagement zone, the first volleys of plasma fire lit up the dark void, signaling the start of the final battle. The Krillaxians, surprised by the sudden and aggressive maneuver, scrambled to respond. Their ships, larger and slower, struggled to counter the nimble Earth fighters, enhanced by stolen technology and driven by desperate resolve. Now, trigger the mines, Nathan ordered over the comm. Explosions ripped through the Krylaxian flanks as they flew into the trap, their shields flickering under the onslaught. The battlefield was chaotic, a storm of debris, energy blasts, and desperate maneuvers. Push through. Target their command ships, Nathan commanded, weaving through the debris as his ship's cannons fired repeatedly. The Earth forces pressed the advantage, breaking through the enemy lines to target the Krylaxian command centers. One by one, the alien ships began to falter, their formations breaking as their command structures were decimated. In the midst of the battle, a massive Krylaxian dreadnought emerged, its cannons charging for a devastating blow. Nathan set his sights on it, knowing that taking it down could turn the tide completely. Cover me! I'm going in! He shouted, pushing his ship to its limits. The dreadnought loomed larger as he approached, firing all around him. Dodging debris and blasts, Nathan released a volley of torpedoes directly at the dreadnought's core. A blinding explosion followed, and the dreadnought began to break apart, its destruction demoralizing the remaining Krylaxian forces. Cheers erupted over the comms as Earth's fighters witnessed the collapse of their foe's flagship. With their command ship gone, the Krylaxian fleet descended into disarray. Seeing the opportunity, Earth's forces doubled their efforts, driving the enemy back, harrowing them relentlessly until the once mighty fleet was nothing but a scattering of retreating ships. As the debris settled, Nathan's ship hovered over the scene of their hard-won victory. The cost had been high, many brave souls lost, but Earth had survived the alien threat. The Krylaxians retreated back towards their part of the galaxy, 
Their invasion thwarted, their respect for humanity's resolve grudgingly earned. Back on Earth, as word of the victory spread, celebrations erupted. Nathan, however, remained in space a while longer, looking out at the stars, reflecting on the sacrifices made. Humanity had been tested, and through unity and valor, they had prevailed. Prepare for the journey home, Nathan finally said to his crew. It's time to rebuild and heal. As they set course for Earth, Nathan knew that this victory was not just a preservation of their home, but a declaration to the universe. Humanity would stand firm, no matter the challenge. In the aftermath of the decisive victory, the world was quiet. Earth's orbit, once a chaotic battleground, now bore the serene traces of peace. Debris slowly orbited the planet, a stark reminder of the recent conflict as ships maneuvered to clear the remnants. Captain Nathan Pierce, standing once more in the command center, watched the cleanup operations on the large screens, his mind reflective. The door hissed open, and Major Derek Jensen entered, a digital tablet in hand. The final reports are in, Nathan. Casualties, damage assessments, and a lot of commendations for your leadership. Nathan nodded, accepting the tablet but setting it aside for a moment. And the Krylaxians? They've withdrawn beyond the Oort Cloud. It seems they're heading back to their territory. Our monitoring stations are keeping an eye, but it looks like they're not interested in round two, Derek reported, a hint of relief in his tone. That's good to hear, Nathan replied, his gaze lingering on the orbital view. What about the reconstruction efforts? Underway. The global response has been incredible. There's a real sense of unity. Countries are pooling resources. Technology sharing is at an all-time high. It's like we're living in a new era, Derek explained, his eyes bright with optimism. Nathan allowed himself a small smile. A new era indeed. Let's hope it's one that lasts. He walked over to a window, looking down at Earth. The planet seemed peaceful from up here, its blues and greens vibrant, clouds swirling over landscapes that had never witnessed the horrors of space combat. It was hard to imagine that, just weeks ago, humanity had faced potential annihilation. Sir, there's also something else, Derek hesitated, breaking Nathan's contemplation. There's talk at the top. They want to establish a new defense initiative, not just for Earth, but as a kind of peacekeeping force in space. They want you to lead it. Nathan turned, surprise evident on his face. Me? You've proven your ability, Nathan. You saved Earth. But the universe is a big place, and the Krylaxians might not be the only threat out there, Derek said, handing over the tablet which now displayed proposals and drafts for the new initiative. Taking the tablet, Nathan skimmed through the documents. The idea of transitioning from a wartime leader to a guardian of peace was daunting yet appealing. I'll think about it, he finally said. Right now, my priority is helping Earth get back on its feet. Derek nodded. Of course, Captain. As Derek left, Nathan turned back to the window. The sun was rising, casting a warm glow that bathed the command center in light. The challenges ahead were many, but for the first time in a long while, Nathan felt a profound sense of hope. Rebuilding would take time, healing even more so. But humanity had come out of its trial by fire stronger and more united. Nathan knew the road ahead would require the same resilience and determination that had brought them through the war. With a deep breath, he made his decision. Stepping away from the window, he started drafting his own proposals for the new peacekeeping force. If humanity was to take its place among the stars, it would do so with the wisdom gained from its darkest days.